For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit. Amen. You can stop there. Somebody say praise the Lord. Y'all may be praise seated the in the Lord. house. Somebody look at your neighbor and say the alarm. Be alarmed. Look at your other neighbor and say, wake up. The alarm is sounding. Wake up. The alarm Somebody is sounding. Somebody put in the comments, wake up. The alarm is a sounding. Wake up. The alarm is sounding. Drake, make sure my uh, camera's a little crooked. Uh, that camera's a little crooked. I'm up there. Let me straighten it out. Just a little bit. There you go. Yeah. That way. Now. Okay, perfect. You got it. Amen. Now, um, I was going, you know, it's interesting when, <clears throat> when the Lord gives me a word every now and then <clears throat> he will give me a particular word. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every now and then he will give me a particular word and I will know before we minister that there's a certain message he wants to bring forth or even in many places it's not, be honest with you, in many places it's not that deep. Sometimes it's just a certain message that prophet wants to bring forth because God has given me that say. Is, is somebody hearing me? It's not always the Lord came down and said, thou must speak about the alarm today. <laughs> nah, it ain't that deep. Huh? Because when you walk with the Lord, everything he's deposited in your spirit is what he's saying. You see that? It's not that deep that deep it's deep but it's not that deep Amen. so many times it's just what i want to say what, what i feel in my spirit sometimes the angel of the lord would direct me to a specific thing sometimes the holy spirit will inspire something amen, amen. Uh, sometimes the lord will have now usually when the lord himself has a certain message to release Usually, it's scary. Amen. Somebody hearing me? Because when God comes down in order to release something, in many places it involves him judging or weighing something. In many places, it's, it's, it's like now God, now, now God's word, and we're going to get to what that means. But now, now God is saying it. Meaning that there is now a, a clock on this thing. Do you hear me? Uh, 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 you work at your job and your, 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 your supervisor tells you something and you're not getting it. Then the boss comes and you're not getting it. Thank you, Dante. Then the, you still don't get it with the boss. Now they call you up to... Level 14. Uh-oh. You're only going up to level 14 for a few reasons. You're only going up to level 14 either because you're getting promoted or you're getting fired. You're getting kicked out. So even when God speaks like that. So now, I wonder when I go into my notes, I get a word like this and a lot of times we get to we get to places where we're on the edge of revelation. I mean, by the time prophet get, I don't know what. A lot of times we're there. I don't know what we're gonna say, talk about. The Lord doesn't reveal it to me till my feet hit the carpet. Amen. And sometimes He don't reveal it to me till I open my mouth. I pray the pastors that are watching will learn how to teach like that. Man. Now. I don't let my notes get too far ahead of me because I used to do that. I never preached what I wrote back then. You ever hear a pastor always say, I had a message, but the Lord told me to teach something. Now, that means you missed it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you planned way too ahead of God. <laughs> Amen. I, did, I, had, I had too many of those moments. I just said, you know what? Forget this. God, what you want to say? 
He's going to say something, and then they don't want to hear from me. And, and, and even whatever you've given me to say, it's got to come from you. So, Amen. So now, I get these messages every now and then. And so, now the Lord, so now, now, now I wanted to talk about the alarm. And I go into the, the scripture to kind of see what the Bible is saying about the alarm. What is it in that God has given my spirit to reveal about this subject? And it's not even about the alarm because the scripture we just read had nothing to do with alarm. Does it? If I say I'm preaching about the alarm, go to Job 33. And all he's talking about is the voice of God. How God speaks in one way or another. Because the essence of this word, somebody say the essence of this word. The essence of this now, word. Now, I'm teaching this way for the teachers. Whenever God gives you a word, there's an essence. If you get too much in here, you lose the essence of the word. You lose the fire. You ever go to teach something and the, 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 the subject was on fire? But when you got a little bit of ways through your notes, it died. Oh, I'm talking to the teachers. <laughs> How many have been there? Like, man, this, this came out so much better when I thought about it. But now that I'm teaching it, it's the, uh, let's, let's just pray. Let's give the benediction and close. Well, you lost the essence of the word. Because the essence of the word is not necessarily in the letter. It's in the spirit that's in the letter. Uh, can I help someone? And I'm not talking about the letter scripture. I'm talking about the letter you carry. Notice we talked about words are carriers. So sometimes the Lord deposits something for you. There's an essence in it. And although that word, it, it, it carries a depth and a complexity... The essence of it is simple because anything that is in the spirit that is accessed by your spirit is simple because your spirit is in that nature. So the essence, when you're in the spirit, you don't have to try. Come on. Do you see that? So many of us, we, so the essence of the word is there. Now, the essence of this word is Job 33, 14. Uh, there was another scripture that talked about the alarm in Psalms. That wasn't the essence of the word. Although we're talking about the alarm, I'm using this term to help you understand a work that God is doing in your life today. Now, when we talk about alarm, we the first thing that comes to mind is uh, some kind of an alert or something to try to get your attention. And we're living in a time where God is giving us signs. And signs become alarms. And notice that the alarm gives out a sound. And when the alarm gives out a sound, that sound carries a certain signal. If we went to the scripture and it says that, that, that there's many voices in the world, none without signification. Meaning that every sound has a certain signal that is released from the sound. And every sound is intended to activate something. Listen to the term activate. In other words, every sound is intended to produce an action. There are spiritual sounds. There are mental sounds. There are earthly sounds. All meant to produce an action. Amen. Amen. Notice that uh, emotions carry sound. Just listen to the word. Emotions. Something intending to cause a motion. There are spiritual emotions. There are soulish emotions and there are earthly emotions all intending to move something 
somebody just thought there was just one type of emotion. There are spiritual emotions. Amen. Spiritual emotions are inspired by a spirit. Not even just God. Some emotions you have are from you. And some are from another spirit. There are spirits that actually specialize in moving emotions. They rout. They're called routing demons. They rout. They set fire to something to move you. Do you see that? Jesus was inspired by God's emotions. He said he had compassion for this, compassion for that. And his emotions move him for the gospel. Amen. Emotions. So uh, 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 the soulish emotions, there's, there's physical. Somebody say, what's physical emotions? Physical emotions are certain signals in your body that cause you to respond or act a certain way. Uh, the doctors will call them hormones. Oh, come on. Hello. Hormones. In other words, you can physically determine what's moving the physically, hormones. Now, the, here's the question. What emotions move what emotions? Because your spirit was always meant to be leading. So all other emotions should fall under your spiritual capacity. That's why the Bible says be led by the spirit. So when you have someone that's emotional, it's talking about being led by the emotions in your soul realm. Because you can be spiritually emotional. Y'all ever see a, the weeping prophet? That's God's emotions. Do you see that? God's emotions. So spiritual emotions are inspired by a spirit. So you can be inspired to feel what God is feeling through the Holy Spirit. You can have righteous indignation. It's a spiritual emotion. Now, you can have somebody, they're all out of whack. Their actions are all messed up, and it's all physical because their hormones are out of balance. There's no spirit there. It's just physical. And then sometimes there's a spirit intending to move something. And sometimes the presence of a spirit will cause an imbalance in the physical realm. Uh, somebody say, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Why do, you think we, why do you think the church is so confused about certain things? Because we don't have revelation. How do you know when there's a spirit bringing a physical imbalance that's coming from a spiritual influence? How do you know that? Only by the Holy Ghost. A uh, psychologist can't tell you that one. The psychologist might be able to tell you the effect, but they can't tell you the cause. Do you see that? So an alarm carries a signal to cause an action in you. Uh, you wake up in the morning, that alarm is going off. Eh, 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 eh. There you go. <laughs> the signal is intending you to get, get up. It's telling you, get up. You got to go to work at this time. Amen. Yeah. Now, if you like me, you roll over, hit snooze. And, and if you're like my wife, she just let the alarm go off. <laughs> Wake up. Get the... the other day, she said, what you tapping me for? I'm saying, you can't hear that. It's loud. It's filling the whole house. She, did, she, had a, she got a whole speaker. The speaker has the alarm on it. That's the truth. You can hear her alarm walking down the street. I'm like, you can't hear that? She said, oh. <laughs> mm. 
You can pull up in the driveway, hear the alarm going off. She got surround sound alarm. Dolby. Dolby HD surround sound alarm. <laughs> And we see the it's seen in the uh, the TV show where they zoom out and the, or you can hear it from space. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> She's sleeping. And eh, eh. where y'all at? Y'all ain't laughing online. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know where they at online. I don't like it so quiet on there. I'm 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 I'm, I'm with y'all over there too. Amen. Let me feel your spirit. Now, so. The alarm going off there, it, it's intending to move something. So now I, I hit snooze. And then it goes off again, and I hit snooze. And then, You ever wake up in the morning, you have a dream that you was late? Did you ever have a dream that you was late? And then you woke up and you wasn't late. Hey Amen. what was that? That was the help of the Lord. <laughs> Listen, if you don't get up. Amen. You prophesy, you be getting prophesied to. <laughs> you watching yourself be late. You got up after that. You said, oh, shoot. Because you felt all of that in the dream, didn't you? You felt that. The Lord is helping you. He'll do that a few times. Amen. He'll do that a few times. But if you keep ignoring it, it'll stop. You just be late. D did you hear that? You Eventually, you'll wake up and it will be reality. Is, is somebody hearing me? Is somebody, somebody say the alarm. The alarm. So Job 33 says, God speaks in one way. Are you, are you catching it? Yes. Yet another. Even in a dream. Are you catching it? Mm -hmm. So in other words, there's an alarm. You hit snooze. There's an alarm. <clears throat> you hit snooze again. There's another. Yet to hide it from the pride of men. To keep thy soul from the pit. Do you see that? What is it saying? It's saying that God is ever speaking to you. He never lets anything happen without having told you. So he sends an alarm. He sends an alarm to you. You missed it. He sends another one. You hit snooze. Ten days later, another one. You hit snooze again. Now... I want to speak to you in your house, but I also want to speak to the nation. Because God has given America alarms. Boom. He's given the nations of the world alarms. Did you know 2020 was an alarm? Come on. Hello. 2020 was an alarm. It was a signal. It was saying, wake up, church. Wake up. Because there were signals before that one amen i actually prophesied i prophesied that if certain things weren't addressed in our nation concerning the racism there would be an alarm george floyd happened and then you begin to see, boom, you begin to see. And what are these? Constantly, these are alarms. They're signals. Now, these signals aren't even in the spiritual realm. Come on. They're in our culture. But God has given the church tools to affect this realm, the natural realm. He's given us tools to affect the culture. So God is setting alarms to sound for the church to have an action. For the church to wake up. So when we, we, when we came in here and we prophesied, God said, watch this. Whenever God says watch, he's intending for you to watch. He, he actually uh, uh, wants you to see the checkpoint. He wants you to see the alarm. He wants you to see the token. Do you see that? So it's a, it's a sign. So many of us, when the Lord is showing things to us, we're not necessarily looking for the sign. 
We're looking for the solution. When in many places, the sign is a alarm preceding the solution. But listen, you'll never arrive at the solution if you don't heed the sign. I'm talking to the nation. God sets alarms and he's saying pray. He's saying intercessors rise. Prophets arise. Speak. God's given us an alarm over our house this week. He's saying tell them to prophesy. Begin to speak. Begin to make a sound over your house. Somebody hear the alarm and wake up and speak to some of those things going on in your situation. Amen. Somebody had a dream on one of our broadcasts. They shared a dream this week and they said, I woke up and they said that my voice is, they said my voice wasn't working. I said, it's a sign. You haven't been using your sound. You have to. When she went to, when it was time for her to speak to something that needed attention, her voice wouldn't work. Don't wait so long. That when it's time for you to speak, you haven't established your voice. No, establish your voice now. So when it's time to speak to something, your sound will actually be making a sound. Do you see that? It's the alarm. God has set an alarm. He speaks one way, yet another, yet another to hide from the pride of men, to keep Thy soul from the pit. And if you keep reading, it actually repeats that phrase. Even the, even the chapter itself is sounding alarm. It repeats it. Read it. Go read the rest of the book. It says it again. I said, wait a minute. I got confused because I thought I read it twice. No, it said it twice. God is trying to get somebody's attention. Sometimes you have those dreams, you have them once, you have them twice. If you have it twice, then surely the Lord is saying something. If you have it three times, it's an established thing. Do you see that? Jesus would say, verily, verily. What is he saying? This thing is vital. Hear. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Somebody say alarm. Alarm. God is trying to sound the alarm on this nation. He's trying to sound the alarm on your house. He's trying to sound the alarm for your life, for your ministry, for your business. He's sounding the alarm. He's saying, rise, begin to pray, begin to speak. Don't wait for the election night to come and then get on your knees and enter. pray now. Pray for what God is doing now. Amen. Now, let me tell you what happens when you miss the alarm so many times. God has to cause something to manifest because his grace is so sufficient. By the time it manifests, it means that you did not heed the alarm. So when 2020 came, it meant that we weren't listening. Because God never desired for 2020 to happen. He allowed it to happen, not because he ordained it to happen. But he allowed it to happen because of the hard-headedness of the church. Is somebody hearing me? Wow. Yeah. So even in the manifestation of struggle, even in the manifestation of a breakdown, even in the manifestation of the issue, even in the manifestation of the circumstance, is the grace of God himself to give you another opportunity to speak to that thing. In other words, God is saying, listen, I tried to tell you about this thing while it was yet hidden, but you did not hear my voice. Now let let me allow you to see so that now you can speak to this thing. Some things somebody is looking at right now. You're looking at some ugly situations. And it's the grace of God that has caused it to manifest before you. For surely there is still time for you yet to speak to some things. Somebody hear the alarm of the Lord. 
There is an expiration. There is an expiration. And listen, God is, listen, he will move to some, he, he, listen, he'll shift into another generation if this one doesn't catch. I honestly believe the rapture should have came. One of the prophets I used to follow Very, very blessed man. He said the Lord told him that he, that, that he would live to see the rapture. Amen. And Terry, the Lord's coming in his later. How many know he passed away? Yeah. Did he miss it? No, he didn't miss it. He didn't miss it. Amen. Amen. Jesus set this system up that we would preach the gospel to every living creature. So, so really, what's tarrying the Lord's coming? Is it the Lord or? Us. There's a delay. Amen. But because of his grace, because of his grace, we prophesied on Sunday. We said that there's still yet a time, a time and a time again. What does that mean? It means that God has extended grace. Do you know there's certain things that happened in the past four years that should not have happened? Only because of the grace of God, the Lord said, we're entering into a time of repentance. The Lord said to me in 2021, he said that should certain things happen, it would affect the harvest for a decade. There would be 10 years of a lost harvest to the church that would need now restoration. Do you see that? Somebody say alarm. alarm. When you hear the alarm of the Lord, you... You, you, when you heed his alarm, you eliminate delays in your midst. Somebody pray today. Let's stand up in the house. Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Oh, look at that. We on time today. I thought for sure it was like 10 o'clock. I'm like, man. Uh, praise the Lord. Bless you, Gwendolyn. Bless you. Mantu rente keda mana osteve. My goodness. Mantu rene keda alamo. Menzo rene ke. Lord, don't let us miss the alarm. Don't let us miss the sound. Don't let us miss the clarion call, Lord. Some of us are being called on a post. Some of us are being called into the work of ministry. Some of us are being called into your word lord cause us not to miss that call lord help us even as you've spoken yet you've spoken again and yet you shall speak again we thank you lord for your grace extend grace in every place some things are manifesting in front of somebody today it's not too late there's grace in what you're looking at. There's still yet time to speak. Begin to lift your voice and speak to the land, the land of your house, the land of this nation. There's certain things that God has allowed to manifest even in the nations of the world today that even were prophesied about that are happening this hour. But there's still yet time to speak. There's still yet time to pray. There's still yet time to prophesy. Intercessors rise. Get on your post. On the post for your nation. On the post for your region. On the post for your house. Hallelujah. Mantu renekeda mantalee. The Bible says that God would not do a thing unless he reveals it to his prophets. I want somebody to understand. It doesn't mean that his prophets shall simply know before God does it. It means that what God does is in the realm of the spirit. 
and what's in the realm of the spirit is allowed to go forth because it entered the mouth of the prophet. Do you see that? So God would not do a thing unless he revealed it to his prophets. Meaning that there are certain things that even God himself is unable to do in the earth unless it comes through the mouth of a prophet. You are the prophet of your life. There's certain things that God himself is refrained from doing unless it comes through your lips. You are the initiator of God's word in your life. The prophet is the initiator of God's word to the nations. This is why every oracle, every voice of the Lord is vital. Even things that are spoken in obscure places, things that haven't even been heard by the ears of men, if the sound itself has yet risen in the realm of the earth, then surely there is an assignment that is going with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody pray. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Somebody give the Lord a shout in here. Amen. Let's